Who is in control of your life? Is it you or is it your circumstances? Is it the people you surround yourself with, your occupation, or the place you live? Maybe you have a goal in mind and you just won't be happy until that goal is achieved. Well, what if all of these choices were taken away from you? Your choices about your job, your marriage, or where you live, could you still find purpose and fulfillment? That's what we are going to discover in today's video. If you know that I live in Chicago, you probably know how much I love Chicago. It's this grand, stunning metropolis with the best architecture in the world. It's got a lake, it's got great jazz bars, amazing restaurants, yet it kind of feels like a town. I can sit down outside and somebody I know will walk past and say hi. It's affordable, it's clean, it's safe, well, in most parts. And really, it's hard to describe how much I love living here. I've never been to a place that so instantly felt like home. Now, recently, I took a trip back to the UK for a couple of weeks, and I had an absolutely fantastic time being there. It got me thinking, if I had to move back, if I had to live in the UK again, yes, it would be my preference, it wouldn't be my first choice, but I could still be happy. The things that make me happy, the things that give me purpose in life, are not tied down to one single factor like location. The UK is a place I left behind two and a half years ago and I've never looked back. By many objective measures, the life that I have here in the US is so much better than the one I had in England. Ultimately, you decide to be happy. And you can even decide that you're not going to be happy until certain criteria are met. But you're really shooting yourself in the foot there because you can choose to be happy. But just because you can choose to be happy, it doesn't necessarily mean that happiness is what you should aim for. There's a building next to my apartment building of office cubicles. And when I look in there at the cubicles, I have two thoughts. One, do they hate their lives as much as I would? And two, can they see into my apartment when I'm having grumpy pumpy? Whatever circumstances you find yourself in, rather than aiming for happiness, I encourage you to seek responsibility. Because with responsibility comes purpose, and with purpose comes fulfillment, which eventually leads to a long-lasting form of happiness. Happiness is not sipping pina coladas on a beach all day. Yes, that might be fun for a week, two weeks, maybe a month if you're really burned out. But eventually, that would begin to feel as depressing and as meaningless as sitting on the sofa watching TV all day. You don't have to be a superhero to find responsibility. Do it in small ways that affect your family and your community. This could be something as simple as taking your little brother to soccer practice on Saturdays, buying your grandma's groceries for her once a week, or simply volunteering for overtime at work. This is why people with pets are on average up to 10% happier than those without. It's not because their pets are fluffy and cute. It's because they have the purpose of looking after another living being. It's about getting up early to take them for a walk, feeding them and taking care of them when they get sick. If you live in a bad neighborhood, you might find more fulfillment and purpose staying in that place and working to improve your neighborhood rather than moving to a perfect, safe, gated community. Because trust me, people in gated communities are often very unhappy. A lot of the ideas in this video came to me after reading the book, A Gentleman in Moscow, which we read as part of our book club within the Gent Z community. So, in A Gentleman in Moscow, it's all about this aristocrat named Count Rostov. After the revolution, rather than being killed like most aristocrats were, he is sentenced to house arrest within his hotel where he lives. But he's not allowed to stay in his suite, he has to go up to a tiny attic room and he is never allowed to leave the confines of the hotel. The Count could have surrendered himself to the misery of his sentence and lived out the rest of his days in a very sad, unfulfilling way, rotting away in this tiny room. But the Count has a realization, and I think it's one that is relevant to all of us. He says, if a man does not master his circumstances, 
then he is bound to be mastered by them. In the end, the Count goes on to live a much more fulfilling and rewarding life within the confines of the hotel than most people out in the ordinary world do. And this insight about mastering your circumstances, making the most of what you currently have, was not an insight that only I had, but also many gentlemen who read this book alongside with me in the Gent Z community. If you want to better yourself alongside other men who share the same values as you, then the Gent Z community really is the perfect place. Wherever you are in the world, whatever age you are, you can join in with the discussion forums, meet like-minded men, and of course, hang out with me and the other gentlemen on twice weekly video calls, which are my personal favorite part of the community. I spend a lot of time within the community interacting and chatting with members, and as a result, this is what the members have to say about the Gent Z community experience. So if this sounds intriguing to you, I highly encourage you to click that link down below and check out the Gent Z community for yourself. I will be there to personally welcome you and help you introduce yourself to the group. Typically I'll eat the same breakfast for a few weeks every day and then I'll change it up. I like that routine of having the same thing. I don't have to think about it. I know it's healthy. I know it's going to serve its purpose. So at the moment, the breakfast is six eggs because I'm in a bit of a muscle building phase. And then I've got some cherry tomatoes and some diced pancetta. So I'm going to scramble the eggs after cooking the tomatoes and the pancetta. This is the pancetta of choice for today. I'm not going to put too much in here, maybe just half an ounce. I really do love that smokiness of the pancetta. I think it goes perfectly with the eggs, especially when you're eating a lot of eggs at one time. You need something to change up the flavor profile. You don't want to just eat six eggs straight, although I have done that many a time. But what's on my mind really at the moment is routine and the power of routine. And I'm definitely a little bit OCD, which has helped me stay in a routine. As a self-employed person at the moment, I find it very important to get out of bed at the same time, to do a fairly similar rhythm of things each day, go to the gym at each time, go to bed at the same time. Because if I didn't, then really I have the freedom to exist in this never-ending kind of playtime but obviously I would get absolutely nothing done and it would all crumble quite quickly. So routine, really for me, is crucial to keeping this house of cards together. I got this new knife. In the Gent Z community, a lot of men in there have discovered that they share a passion for cooking. And I asked people for a recommendation on a great knife. They said, don't buy a block of knives, it's terrible value for money. What you want to do is buy a great eight inch chef's knife. So that's what I did. It's from this brand Kangoo in Japan. A little bit cheaper than some of the similar brands from Germany, but incredible quality. I, I cannot think of any kind of metaphor other than something very sexual and vulgar to describe how good it feels to cut with this knife. I'm still in the phase of keeping it in the box after using it every time. I know that won't last forever, but it comes in a really beautiful presentation box and I just enjoy washing it up and putting it back in there. Well, here we have it. In my mind, a breakfast fit for a gentleman, scrambled eggs with pancetta and cherry tomatoes and a small glass of orange juice. So the final thing I wanted to talk about in today's video was the power of routine because even if everything else is against you right now, even if you're struggling emotionally, no matter what the impacts of your circumstances are, you can find power in routine. And a routine could be something as simple as waking up every day and at the same time, making your eggs. In A Gentleman in Moscow, even though he's confined to his hotel, we see how in the early days, he finds strength through his routine, waking up at the same time every day, doing his exercises in his room. 
eating his breakfast, and then going down to the lobby of his hotel to read his newspaper. The rhythm of your routine will give you this momentum that will help you resist whatever emotional urges you have to surrender to the difficulty of your circumstances. And the great thing about routine is that as much as you can, you get to choose what is included. Think about the activities that you can include, ways to fill your time that will give you not the most happiness, but the most fulfillment. Because happiness seems like a shortcut, but it's actually a dead end cul-de-sac. Set your intentions for the day and feel empowered by your ability to do what you said you would do. And here's the rub with a routine. You have to do what you said you would do regardless of how you feel.